Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, I, good night. I don't know what time it is where you are, but certainly we are grateful that you joined us for Sunday School. It is May the 29th. It's lesson number 13, and it's based on Galatians, the fifth chapter, the 16th through the 26th verse. And the name of our lesson today is Fruitful Life. Fruitful Life. So, I hope you continue to be safe. Wash your hands, wear your mask where needed, stay six feet apart, and you know what I like to say, just plain old staying away from folks. So we're going to pray, then we're going to do our What's It All About, and we're going to get right into our lesson. Lord, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you, we lift you up and glorify you. God, we thank you for this day in which you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we ask that you would just meet us at our point of need. God, everything that we learn on today, cause it to be planted deep into our hearts, our minds, and our souls. God, we thank you. We bless you, we lift you up, and we glorify you for all that you do and all that you have done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Again, tonight, our, well, whatever time it is where you are, we're at lesson number 13, and it's based on Galatians 5th chapter, 16th through the 26th verse. Now let's read our what's it all about. I don't see Rachel's name on your list. Miss Robinson noted after scanning her daughter's pizza party guest list. Katara was so preoccupied with finalizing her plans that she didn't really absorb what her mom was saying. She's so new to our neighborhood, and I thought if you invited her, she would get more acquainted with some of the other kids. I'm not sure who that is, Katara said callously. Well, you may know her better as Raggedy Ann. Since that's the name I believe I heard you all tagging her with one day when she passed by. I never called her that, Katara insisted. Then you know, then you do know the girl I'm talking about. Miss Robinson shook her head in disapproval. Where'd you all even come up with that? It wasn't me, Katara pleaded. I guess they were making fun of her reddish hair and her raggedy looking clothes. Like an old doll my friend's grandmother gave her. Katara tried to explain. Well, Rachel is her name. Miss Robinson said sternly. And I had the pleasure of meeting, making her acquaintance along with her family a while ago. She seemed like a very polite young lady, and you all are not even giving her a chance. Katara turned away shamefully. You know her mom. You know, her mom continued. Rachel may not have all the pretty clothes and you and your, that you and your friends have to wear on the outside, but from what I can tell, she appears to be dressed very nicely on the inside with a very pleasant spirit. Katara sighed in response. You know, it's not about pleasing yourself or your friends, Miss Robinson noticed. It's about pleasing God. It is all you think. It is in all you think, say, and do. Have you ever decided between pleasing God and pleasing yourself or others? What was the consequence of that choice? What might be the outcome of Kantara inviting Rachel to the party? So I always tell my girls this. It is not about what you do when I can see you doing it. It is about what you do when no parent, no teacher, no guardian can see what you're doing. 
Because the truth is, God can see you anytime you do what you do. But if you think like that, that's the beginning of wisdom and integrity. If you do the right thing, even if nobody is looking. If you do the right thing, even if your parents don't know. If you do the right thing, even if your pastor or your preacher or your teacher or people around you, your teacher at school or whoever is in authority is paying or not paying attention, it is to do the right thing regardless of who is looking. Learning from God. Sometimes making the right godly, the right decision can be challenging, especially when there's pressure by those around us to do what's contrary to God's choice. Our lessons passage should help us better discern how we can know if you're making a choice from your own ungodly self or spirit of God. Galatians 5th chapter 16 to the 26th verse, the NIV version. So I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, in these drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such thing, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have been crucif have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Mm, mm, mm. To tell you the truth, I don't have to teach anything because you can read that two or three times. Pick out you something, pick out everything, and realize that there are some things that go on in life that we do, that we have in us, that are not of God. And then... You can't apply the law to those things. You have to apply Jesus' blood, his spirit, his faith to it. So Galatians is speaking to the Galatians. It's a letter from Paul talking to them about some things that they got going on. Well, it's talking about the spirit of versus not walking in the spirit. Now, once again, and there was a lot of arguing going on about should we live like this? Should we do this? Should we be under the law? Should we not be under the law? And Paul was trying to get the people to understand that their salvation, their baptism, their um, being baptized with the Holy Spirit, and their lives that they were living could not fall under the law. No matter what, you were going to end up either breaking the law or living contrary 
to the law. So it says that for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. Listen, let me tell you something. What if your classmate walked in the room and slapped you? It would take the spirit to override what your flesh really wants. Because if you walk up to somebody and slap them, your flesh is going to kick in and you might be fighting. But what, what they're trying to teach the Galatians is that your flesh always wants what it wants. It always wants the cookie. If you lay a, a plate, if I lay a plate full of cookies out here, there's this cute little um, thing that they do on um, America's Funny Home Videos with little kids. And they will either put um, a cookie out in front of them, some candy out in front of them, and then the mother or the father will say, hey, we don't want you to eat this. Try, if you don't eat it, if you don't touch it, you'll get it. And then they'll leave the room with that cookie or that piece of a candy right there in their face. And they have a video recording. And some kids make it through, some don't. But the amazing thing is the conversation that that child is having while looking at this cookie or piece of candy. It's like, oh, mama said I can't have it. And that's how our lives are. With what we should not do, sometimes we have to override our flesh because our flesh, it wants the candy. It wants it. It wants it even if they have to, if you have to steal it. Even if you have to take it from your brother or your sister. Even if you have to sneak it out to do it. You understand? So, you have to override the flesh with the spirit. You are not under the law. Verse 18 says, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So verse 19 goes on to name all of the things that are under the flesh. And it's a list. Immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Which, and the like means anything like it. If we missed it, if we didn't name it, and everything that's like it. All of these things are works of the flesh. Now, there's one thing we don't tell you about giving you all these lists and rules and regulations that you can't do. You can't do it. You can steal tomorrow and it's just fine. You can have a fit of rage and it's just fine. The problem is what you do ha always has consequences. Your parents and people around you always talk about the devil. Yeah, but most of what we receive back is not the devil. They are consequences to all of your actions. So yeah, you can do all of these things. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage. You can have a fit of rage right now. You can go in the room, your mama or dad or whoever's in charge of you say no to you and you can fall out and act a monkey fool. 
but you have to deal with the consequences. So live in the spirit, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, you know, forbearance is patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there are no law. All of those things will keep us from the consequences of our sins, the consequences of our flesh. Self-control, if I slap you, will keep you from getting into a fight. Self-control will keep you from doing all kinds of things. Kindness, being kind to someone. Sometimes when someone is in an uproar, being kind to them can change the way they act with you. Now, sometimes it doesn't, and they'll have their own set of consequences, but all of these things are fruits of, fruit of the Spirit. Those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. So you might say, Ms. Gina, I know a lot of people who say they belong to Jesus Christ and they do a lot of the stuff you just named. Well, you got to check and see if they claim Jesus Christ or if they belong to Jesus Christ. So, in our community, we got a lot of people who say we're cousins. I can claim you as a cousin, but that don't mean you belong in my family. You got me? So, when you see someone and they are claiming that they love Christ, you have to check and see if they actually belong to Christ. And how do you check that? You check that with the fruit of their spirit. How do you know that this tree is good? You check the fruit. You take a piece of the apple. You bite into the apple. If it's not good, then the tree is no good. Those are the things that we call Fruit inspecting. So those who belong to Jesus Christ have been crucified, the flesh with the passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. That's what we have to do. We have to change our lives, belong to God, and we have to operate in the spirit. So I hope we have said something that will help you out on today. I hope that you'll operate in the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, because there is no law against any of these things. So I hope you have a great week. I hope to see you here next week. Continue to wash your hands, wear your mask where needed, create some distance between you and other people. And especially if like that little boy at school, if they're coughing and sneezing, just stay away from folks. I love you. I hope to see you soon. See you next week.